Jerry Seinfeld recently teamed up with streaming giant Netflix to write, direct, and act in a brand new comedy exclusive called Unfrosted. I watched it, and now I'm going to tell you whether or not Jerry's still sponge-worthy. Giddy up. Before starting the review, I need to let you know I'm a huge Seinfeld fan. I love the TV series from back in the 90s, have all the seasons, I, I've binged them a million times, a, a highly quotable show, great characters, terrific writing. It's withstood the test of time, in my opinion. And in college, my buddies and I went and saw him perform his stand-up routine. It was fantastic. Those were the good old days when I enjoyed things. Also, if you wouldn't mind, please hit the subscribe button on the channel. It's free of charge, costs you nothing. Like the video and comment below. That would be great. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, Unfrosted, the, the new Netflix film. It's an hour and a half, it's PG-13, kind of skews young and old at the same time, but not really young at all. Here's the deal. I sat down and watched this with my whole family and my kids bounced about a half hour in once it was becoming very clear that this wasn't a film they were going to understand at all. You see, this movie takes place in the 60s. At the height of Post and Kellogg popularity, they were at war with each other. They were at odds at every turn. Kellogg would come out with a new serial, then Post would answer back. But something was taking place over at Post. They were working on something special, something secret. A pop secret, if you will. Eh, not really, that's popcorn, but we'll, we'll keep going. And so none of this meant anything to my children who don't really eat a lot of cereal. There's really no TV anymore, so to speak. Cable's pretty much dead. Streaming apps don't have a lot of cereal commercials. So the Trix Rabbit, Lucky Charms, Tony the Tiger, Snap, Crackle, and Pop. A lot of this stuff's kind of lost on them. They might have a cursory understanding of it, but it's nothing that they've seen more than once or twice in passing. That's a shame, because this whole movie is predicated on the idea that you know and understand and love cereal as much as Jerry does. The problem is no one really does love cereal as much as Seinfeld. <laughs> he's been obsessed with it ever since the pilot of the show. He's constantly eating it, he's constantly making references, and now he finally makes a movie about it, but he calls it Unfrosted, which is the unofficial Pop-Tart story it's really more about cereal, though, and this feud. The Pop-Tart stuff, that's kind of second, and it eventually will come to a head later, but for the most part, it's the rivalry. And for the first almost 30 minutes of the movie, it's kind of working for me. Seinfeld's directing for the first time. He's doing a fine job. I wouldn't say it's very inspired work, but this is a comedy at the end of the day. You don't have to go crazy with it, all right? Just get the cameras in the right places, make sure actors are hitting their lines, and we're good to go. But after about 30 minutes, this film just keeps snowballing larger and larger, and next thing you know, we have a full-blown avalanche of non-stop references, 20 different plots going on, and so many zany characters with such little time. And so many actors playing these characters that are very popular, or at least you recognize them from something, that there's just no time to come up for air. And so many of these gags are throwaway or feel out of place. I brought up the cast. This thing's a who's who of actors. You have Amy Schumer playing the evil queen, Mrs. Post. Max Greenfield's her assistant. That's Schmitty from New Girl. You have like half the cast from SNL showing up here and there. Christian Slater's in this. Hugh Grant plays a stage performer taking a gig as Tony the Tiger. Cedric the Entertainer, Jack McBriar, Tony Hale, Peter Dinklage, Fred Armisen, and of course Seinfeld's co-star, Melissa McCarthy. And that's like half the big names that roll through this thing. <laughs> the surface level is quite easy. Kellogg finds out Post is making their own version of a Pop-Tart, so Kellogg's gonna get to work making theirs. They found out Post stole their plans, and now they want to be first to market, or at least try to compete. That's, that's the basic plot. But within that is so much bullshit. You have the Milk Mafia. You have a Colombian sugar dealer. You have deals going on with Russia. Snap, Crackle, and Pop are starting up a mutiny. Oh, and there's also two random children that just kind of are part of this movie because we have to draw kids into watching this somehow. It just makes sense. Now, if this sounds good so far, you might get a little shrinkage when I tell you it's not funny in the slightest. And even though I thought a B-movie was really bad, for some reason this one stings a lot more. 
Maybe because it's live action animation, it seems like Jerry was just cashing a check with his name on it. Seinfeld doesn't need the money. The guy's a billionaire with a B. Like a B movie. And in the interviews, he seems sincere. He just wanted to make a fun movie and make people laugh. That's all, that's all endearing. That's all good. I remember watching Zoolander 2 and thinking this is one of the worst fucking sequels I've ever seen. And all these years later, Ben Stiller gets asked about it once in a while or he brings it up as this kind of war wound because he saw how much people hated Zoolander 2 and he thought he was making a really funny good movie like the first one. So he was shell-shocked by it and it cut him. It cut him deep, Shrek. And I have to say, Ben Stiller, he's, he's good. He's good for a mulligan. He's good for a screw-up, okay? He gets a pass. He's made so many freaking funny, awesome movies that he doesn't ever have to make a good one again. And that goes with Jerry as well. Jerry gave me nine fantastic seasons of Seinfeld that I can quote and look back on and laugh and share with friends and family members. It's okay that he made a crappy hour and a half Netflix film. I think everyone kind of expects a crappy Netflix film at this point. Their batting average is so, so bad. And because I've heard Jerry talk publicly about a myriad of things, I know that he doesn't care what some random idiot on YouTube has to say. He's going to be just fine. And maybe even appreciate that this person's being blunt and honest, because that's exactly how he would be. So at that 30 minute mark, it was just painful to sit through this thing. Joke after joke misfiring. And I think I can pinpoint exactly when it all went wrong. Because at around 25, 30 minutes, they introduce this dream team of characters that's going to help Bob and Stan, played by Melissa McCarthy, to create this pastry-filled toasted or untoasted treat that they can sell in competition with Post. The dream team includes Chef Boyardee, a guy that may or may not be a Nazi. I think he's joked as a white supremacist based on a real character. There's just all these, like the Schwinn bike creators there. Nobody that has anything to do with actual food. And I guess that's supposed to be a joke in itself, except for Chef Boyardee, of course. No disrespect to the chef. Oh, there's also a computer there too that's gonna be helping out. He's part of the team. This film's not taking anything seriously, which is fine, that's cool. Again, I, I address films like Zoolander or an Austin Powers or something of that ilk. This is kind of falling into that framework, but falling on its face at every step. Zoolander 2, I think, is better than this, and I hate that movie. Dumb and Dumber 2, I think, is better than this, and I don't like that movie either. And it's not because there's bad ideas here. There's actually a good amount of ideas that could have worked had Jerry focused more on them. For instance, the Snap, Crackle, and Pop characters, they only show up twice in the movie, to my recollection. Once is very early, when Bob dismisses their pleas to get more screen time, to do more in the company. And then the next is when they throw a January 6th against Kellogg. All the mascots and characters rise up and try to stop the certification of this Pop-Tart signing very much going off of what happened a couple years ago in America. It just felt so out of place and tonally did not match with anything else going on. And to have Snap, Crackle, and Pop show up again so late in the game just didn't really line up. Had we put more focus on these characters, had them show up five or six times before this happened, then I could maybe see it working more if these were the foils for Bob. But Post is the big bad. But then also the milkmen are the big bad. But then also there's this Colombian guy that shows up once and that's it. There's just too much here. The irony here is it feels like a movie that would have been better as a TV series. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it just didn't fit in the framework of an hour and a half film. Had you stretched out and maybe fleshed out some of the characters like the Milk Mafia and all that other stuff, then yeah, I see that being a fun, silly half hour throwaway TV series. Randomly having James Marsden playing Jack LaLanne means nothing to kids, barely means anything to me. And having him in this movie means nothing at all. Like, why is he in this? What's the deal with Jack LaLanne? Why is he in this film about Pop-Tarts? The visuals are very colorful, which will help lull you into a nice sleep around the 45 minute mark of this film. I had to like slap myself awake a couple times. Since this is a terrible comedy, we obviously end with the dance number. We have a montage here of Jerry and all the other cast singing along with the Megan Trainer song on all the different sets. Pop-Tarts! 
Oh, this movie's making Adam upset. I need to calm myself down. Serenity now. Serenity now. Those are my thoughts on the film. Let me know if you wasted your time watching this or maybe you had a different outcome. Maybe you liked Unfrosted. Maybe it worked for you. The silly antics, a baby ravioli that comes to life and hops around. <laughs> That's really in this film. Let me know. Leave a comment. Like the video. Please subscribe if you haven't. It's Again, it's free. It costs you nothing but a little bit of time to hit it and that's it. If you really like what I'm doing, I have a second channel, Adam Does Rants, where I rant, where I complain about first world problems. It's very fun. I think people can relate to McDonald's never having ice cream or just the magical experience that is the dentist office. If you love what I'm doing, please think about supporting the channel at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. I'm a one-man operation, clearly in need of a haircut, so your, your donation will make that happen. Well, that's it for me. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Bang, 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 bang,